So Microsoft held an event on September the 21st where they did not announce uh, Surface Duo 3. Sorry, had to bring it up. What they did talk about was Windows 11 AI Copilot a whole bunch, and then they also did unveil some new hardware. In this video, I'm going to try to give you sort of a condensed form of most of this stuff, and I did this by making a Twitter thread with images and notes that I'm going to kind of work off of for this video. So let's dive into some of these big changes. First off, the co-pilot stuff, the AI stuff. This is coming September the 26th in part. It's unclear to me from reading different blog posts and so forth exactly how much of this is coming on September the 26th, but it does appear as though at least the co-pilot bit is coming in just a handful of short days. So what is co-pilot? Copilot will be this nifty little icon in your taskbar that when you click on it, it's going to open up a sidebar. Maybe you've been using Microsoft Edge and you've seen the sidebar there. It pulls out and it gives you some options. That's going to just be built into Windows now. So in this image, they've actually clicked it with, I believe, a right click and then hit summarize. And then what happened in the video is it took a look at the text that was on their screen, that sidebar pulled out, and then it began summarizing what was on their screen. That is a very interesting feature, and it's something I've actually used in Microsoft Edge. Now that's just going to be in Windows in general. You can see explain this and rewrite as well. Those things you're going to do exactly what you think that they're going to do. They also showed clicking in some text fields and then describing what they wanted to write and letting Copilot take that prompt and run with it and give them a whole bunch of text that they could then copy and place into uh, you know where they wanted that text to go. So again, generating text, summarizing text, explaining things all built in. Pretty much no matter what you're doing, it appears as though at your fingertips you're going to have this AI available to you to do all sorts of interesting things, like basically support you, be your co-pilot, give you information, help write things for you, tons and tons and tons of possible uses there. But they're putting AI in everything and in some really, really interesting places. I use the snipping tool all the time. In fact, all these images were captured using the snipping tool. How about this? You snip something and there's Copilot. Like I said, it pulls out from the side. You have the ability to explain this image, adjust the brightness, remove the background, resize, and even upscale the image. These are tools that for me, someone who makes thumbnails all the time for YouTube videos, I use a website called remove.bg. Will I be able to stop using remove.bg and just do it all inside Windows, snip it, remove the background, paste it into my video editor, or my uh, my photo editor rather, and make my thumbnail, that is really cool. Heck, I might even be able to use <laughs> Microsoft's own paint application to make my thumbnails because they're adding AI to that as well. Let's take a look at that. The ability to blur a background inside the photos application. That's pretty darn cool. But inside paint itself, not only do they now have layers like a proper photo editor, should have. They also have co-creator that will allow you to generate imagery now using the Dolly 3 instead of, I believe they were using like an older model of Dolly. This should be quite a bit better. Now they show changing the background, digital art, green background illustration stuff. Put in a prompt, it's going to generate stuff for you. And the image manipulation stuff goes even further because they actually showed a ton of stuff inside Microsoft Word. They pull out Copilot and they say, hey, make me a banner for this document that I'm making. And it used the context of their page to generate these banners. You can also take some photos on your computer, drag them in and say, make me a collage. And it generated all of this stuff for you, again, using the text you put in and the images you put in, but let's manipulate these images. And there's some insane stuff here. How about object erasing? We have magic eraser on our Pixel devices. What about built into Windows, right? We're deleting some images and stuff in the background using AI. And this is a really cool one too that Google has talked about coming with their Pixel software, expanding an image. You want this image to be bigger? They drag it up and it uses AI to fill in what was probably in the rest of this image. This is absolutely incredible stuff. And again, it's just gonna be at your fingertips built into Windows now. 
Now I'm going to drop a link to their full blog post down below because there's a lot of stuff in there. If I was going to try to talk about all of it, this would be like a 30 minute long video. And at that point, you should probably just go check it out from them directly. These are some of the highlights for me, some of the crazier things. So again, check out that link down below. But it wasn't just about software. They also showed off some new hardware. What about the Surface Laptop Studio number two? Now I must admit, not a lot changed about this thing. It's still the Laptop Studio 2. It's, it's, it's still the Laptop Studio that we have already seen. It's thick. It opens up. The screen flexes down. It's the same thing, but it is supposed to be two times faster CPU performance, ultimate productivity, and creativity, as you can see there, starting at $1,999, 13th gen i7 CPU and either an RTX 4050 or 4060. You can push this thing all the way up to like you know $3,000 if you want to do that. It's a very high-end device. It looks good. It's refreshed, new internals, nothing much else going on there. Same story for the Surface Laptop Go number three. It's supposed to be 88% faster, all-day battery life starting at $799, 8 gigs of RAM, Core i5. It's the Laptop Go, okay? Not a whole lot changed in there either. Four different color options that I think look pretty decent. And again, starting at $7.99. Now, they did also unveil the Surface Go number four, but they say it's for business, available exclusively for organizations. That is very, very strange to me, but whatever, there it is. It's the Go number four. It looks just like the Go number three. And then they also have their studio, or rather their Surface Hub number three, which is good, again, for companies, for big meetings and presentations and things like that. Not really something that individuals are going to be using. The hardware, I believe, is all up for pre-order now with the software stuff, like I said, coming September the 26th for Copilot, and then more things coming throughout the fall. And again, it's unclear to me exactly what is coming when read the blog post, read other people's articles, it's just not super clear what is coming when. But at any rate, this is some very impressive stuff and it is clear, hardware didn't change a whole lot, guys. It's all about AI for Microsoft going forward. They are absolutely doubling down on this AI stuff and a lot of it's very impressive, but a lot of this is stuff that you guys, some of you are gonna be not very interested in, but I'd love to know your thoughts down below, do you see anything maybe in this video in the blog post that you think, wow, that is going to be in my workflow? I definitely do see some things I'm going to be using probably on a daily basis. But again, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.